A breakaway finally got its chance in the sun today, except it was raining, with big bad Jumbo Visma in a World Tour race finally letting one win. Jonas Vingegaard dominant yesterday and looking pretty good for the overall as we head into the mountains, but who knows, anything can happen this weekend. But first, we've got a little medium mountain test from Nantua to Crete Volande, and we have the longest climb of the day cap to the Col de Zaravi. Not that hard, 7K, 6%, before us two staircases with steep gradients within them at the finish. So less likely there'd be big GC action compared to yesterday. And when I saw this big break, I thought, oh, this is going all the way. Multiple uh, Total Energy riders, Ineos represented with Castroviejo, Craddock, Jorgensen, and as well as Zimmerman for Anton Marche. Uno X were chasing, though. They got Tobias Holland Johannesson who is quite punchy. He came third or second in the reduced group sprint the other day or yesterday. And DSM were also chasing. Why? Don't know. They didn't have a puncher. They missed the break. So anyway, Godou would be hoping not to lose too much more time. Alpsen and Lotto Destiny also seem to miss the break. So Dries Devenines with him in there, pacing for Bagioli, it meant 100% wouldn't be a day for Alaphilippe unless this got brought back, which is kind of curious because... He's been looking good in this finish, even though he struggled, you know, following Vingegaard yesterday. No shame in that. This isn't as hard as as yesterday in terms of a long climb. But here's the, here's the coldest RV. The gap is only 150 with 26 k's to go. And we've still got, say, two and a half or three climbs, if you count the last two as as climbs. And Zangler gets dropped. Trenton's struggling. Guglielmi attacks, even though uh, Total Energy had multiple rides from a pacing, which wasn't a good idea. And finally, I think Bergado or Viermoj goes after him. And Unix can't close this much more than 135 because the breakaway, there'd been guys in there who'd been bluffing a little bit. Jorgensen feeling the effects of the crash from a few days ago. And then they finally opened up the taps. Castroviejo here and Bergado, they realize, oh, We've just been led off the front, and Craddock's not got a teammate. He doesn't want to chase full gas. Bagioli, I think G. Stevenon is about to drop, and those two just roll off the front, get a nice gap, and start really working. And this gap to the peloton doesn't really change at all for the next 40 minutes, despite Kenny Alasson the pacing, presumably for the Chicone stage win, which also makes sense. Because, you know, he won a Valenciana stage. He's quite good in a punchy finish. But Bagioli paces the chase group in the break behind those two escapees, Fuga de la Fuga. But he he gets dropped eventually, Bagioli. So disappointing for him. Zimmerman used him a little bit as a bridge and then easily bridged across to these two. And the, these would be our three, despite the best efforts of uh, Trek Segafredo behind. They wouldn't be able to close too much more than this on Col de Zaravi. And then on the descent, Castro was really fast. But I thought at this point, well, Bagioli's been dropped, right? Wouldn't he and Dee Stevenon start pacing or chase behind for Alaphilippe, who can still win the stage from the GC group? But he kind of just sat in the middle of no man's land for a long time, despite this trio getting over the crest. They were never getting back to those guys. And yet, oh, Ineos, why are they chasing behind Castro? Actually, what they did was quite clever. They got to the front before the technical twisty descent of the Col de Zaravi, so keeping Martinez and Bernal safe. But then... They kind of put the block on as much as possible, and the gap went back out with Castro pushing on the descent. Zimmerman actually was losing the wheel quite a bit, out to 134, 140 almost, with EF coming forward with Amador, who'd been dropped out of the break for Carapaz. That's Alaphilippe first, uh, third wheel, so he was still looking lively. Vingegaard, actually, he and Benoit lost positions, and Volta also was at the back of this group. So Yamo Visma couldn't maintain front position for Vingegaard on this wet, uh, twisty descent. But here's the two final climbs, seven and a half case to go. The gap has gone out, and these are quality riders. Bergado won a stage of Paranis last year in very strong fashion, but Elson comes all guns blazing, but not for long enough, only for about 500, 600 metres, and the gap only goes down about seven seconds, and Benoit looks behind, sees it's just him and Jonas, there's no Sepp Kusi, no Wilco Kelderman, no Primoz Roglic, Volta's off the back and has been dropped, and you know, it's a real yellow jersey, already won a stage. He's not going to take much time on this finish anyway, so he's not going to really pace to bring back the breakaway or drop himself. UAE, I think, with Groschartner and Micah and Yates, they were thinking much of the same thing. With Alphalete still in this group, you bring the break back, you're still going to get tailed in the finish. He put lengths on everybody in the sprint on stage two. And so this was looking really good coming into the last climb for this breakaway trio, who've been working pretty well together. Maybe on the second last climb, Bergado skipped a couple of turns, but... I was doing pain face assessment. It was difficult to read. Maybe Zimmerman looked the freshest. There was a bit of drool on everybody. Castro, maybe a bit too generous in his efforts earlier. And at the bay, or on the steep section, Zimmerman hits the other two. 
No response. Now, I think Bergado's plan here was to let Castro work, keep the gap at two seconds, and then eventually bridge across. But the problem was he had to do a bit of work because Castro was losing ground, and it's so steep that you're not getting much advantage from any draft on such a steep section. And the gap had now gone to over three seconds, and Bergado's probably thinking, ooh, have I just let Zimmerman get an advantage and go up the road? Remember the last... Little bit's not steep. So Zimmerman's got a good sprint. He's won a reduced group sprint before his first pro victory. And eventually Bergado does move across, dropping Castro Viejo. It is looking good for him, and maybe Zimmerman's blown up. But as I said, flattens out here. Zimmerman's already gone into recovery mode, probably has the better sprint. And then Bergado, with less than 30 seconds recovery after that bridge, opens up the sprint from 300, and Zimmerman beats him easily winning the biggest race of his career, the biggest race of Antomarche's season, their first World Tour dub of the year in the Criterium de Dauphiné, no less. They'll be very happy with that, and hopefully we'll see this man in the breakaway in the Tour de France next month. Back in the GC group, Johannes and I think attacked. You think got countered. Yeah, he got a little bit of a gap, but they all rode it in. Nothing too much happened. We'll see them all fight tomorrow. But Zimmerman wins the stage ahead of Bergado and Castro Viejo. Ciccone with that group of GC guys. Here is what the German had to say after the stage. Uh, to be honest, I cannot really believe it at this moment. I just like gave my best and tried everything to be as good as possible. And it worked out perfectly all day long. I felt yesterday incredibly strong, but like it didn't work out. Then today I tried again and like... I just gave everything I know the Paco very well because in 2018 there was a Tour de Avenir finish up here and I was in similar situation but just the GC favorites sprinted around me 200 meter to go and today it was the other way around so I could attack on the climb and go full gas and in the end I win the sprint now I'm like completely speechless and yeah like like a rendezvous from the Tour de Avenir five years ago. But here's the GC gaps going into the two mountain stages. Big one tomorrow, mountain top finish. O'Connor on 110. Will he try to attack Vingegaard or will he be defending his second position against Yates, Hindley, Haig, Martinez, who are all knocking on the door? That's what I want to see tomorrow. But probably, if this week's to go by, Vingegaard's looking good for another stage win. Until the recap of that, ciao.